As the table turns, so goes the soundtrack of our lives. Hey VC, this is Carlos from As The Table Turns. Um, so I recently made some more purchases uh, through Instagram um, uh, from a seller called uh, LP Guru. Um, and uh, he does these different um, different little sales that he does on from, from his uh, Instagram page um, called uh, Feeding Frenzies. And uh, definitely I would, um, tell you to look into that uh, follow him on Instagram and uh, wait wait patiently for the next feeding frenzy because he usually has some really really amazing stuff and it's taste his taste varies uh, it's quite quite wide um, so um, yeah but he uh, the last two he did were jazz strictly jazz so um, uh, I didn't, wasn't able to do his very last one, but the one prior to that, I, I was able to pick some albums up. Um, the album we're actually listening to right now is one of the ones I found, um, Gil Evans Orchestra, Out of the Cool. Um, this is a great album. You can definitely tell that Gil Evans is, is one of the architects and uh, minds behind the cool, the sound, the cool. Um, along with Miles Davis and um, Jerry Mulligan and Lee Connitz. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this album definitely sounds like a, a soundtrack. Um, and I know sometimes that may sound corny or not, not good, but this, is, this sounds like a, not a bad soundtrack or a soundtrack that is uh, waiting for dialogue to take up the space, but, um, but a soundtrack that is almost for a... Um, uh, a movie with very uh, minimal dialogue, um, and uh, yeah, very you know, very awesome movements. It, do, it it says orchestra, but it uh, it doesn't feel like a big band. Um, okay. Daddy. Sorry, that was my daughter that came in and uh, kind of walked in, but anyway. Um, like I was saying, it definitely doesn't feel like um, a big band. I mean, he can make it sound like that, and, and there are moments, um, little little moments and, and pockets where, where he definitely uses the whole band at once, but um, it can sound very minimal, um, and it, he can solo in on just a few um, of, of the, the, the band bandmates uh, and musicians. Um, so... Um, but yeah, definitely sets a mood, uh, a cool, uh, if you know what the cool is, sets that mood. Um, but uh, but yeah, just a awesome, you know, awesome mood setter. You know, I don't know how to explain it. Like just the sound, like the soundtrack gets you into this this vibe. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, let's look at the inside. Has a little bit of. Uh, little bit of mold that came uh, came with it but uh, cleaned it up a little bit more uh, it was a little a little worse than that but uh, anyway uh, that's Gil Evans right there um, kind of breaks down where everybody sits you know in the band um, so that's a whole band right there um, but yeah he's got uh, Elvin Jones uh, on percussion uh, Charlie Persip on percussion. Uh, he's got tuba, Bill Barber, uh, bass trombone, Tony Studd, uh, trombone, Jimmy Nepper, and Keg Johnson. Uh, on trumpet, John Coles. Uh, another trumpet is Phil Sunk Sunkel. Um, alto sax, flute, and piccolo, Ray, Ray Beckenstein. And also the same for Eddie Kane. Uh, alto, flute, piccolo, uh, Bud Johnson, tenor, and soprano saxophones, and then Bob uh, 
Picarico uh, on bassoon, flute, and piccolo. He's got Ron Carter on bass, Ray, Car Ray Crawford on guitar, and then he's playing piano. So um, 15, 15 piece orchestra. Um, but like I said, it doesn't sound like a big band. Uh, he can make it sound like that. Um, and I'm not against big band, I love big band. Um, but, uh, but anyway, just trying to specify the, the sound that, that this record kind of has. Um, the, the first song, La Nevada, is quite long. I don't even know if it has the, almost takes up the whole side. Um, yeah, I don't think it has the, uh, oh wait, right here, 15, 15 minutes, 15 and a half minutes for La Nevada. Uh, so quite a long song then the, on that other on the same side as where flamingos fly um, With that one kind of starts out with a uh, I, I mean a trombone is definitely the, the centerpiece of that one um, at least at first um, Yeah, then you just, it, You know, he just sets a mood with all these different all, all these different songs they all build build Bilbao, um, I don't know how to say that song. You know, it's kind of very, uh, very moody uh, at the beginning. Um, once again, like I said, trying to almost sounds like a soundtrack. But anyway, that was one of the finds uh, I was able to pick up there. Um, I don't remember what presses these are, but I don't really care. They sound great. Um, this is the next one I picked up. Is a uh, Horace Silver Silver Serenade. Um, so yeah, this is definitely different from other Horace Silver stuff. Horace Silver definitely can, you know, he has some pretty fast tempos uh, with his songs. This is is an exception in his in his catalog and his discography. Um, it's it's you know the the first song and once again, usually Blue Note uh, likes to start out with. Um, a cooker right at the beginning like something that just really uh, very fast tempo but here it's you know silver serenade which is a very melodic uh, type song uh, let's get to the nitty-gritty kind of brings it up just a little bit but not much um, the tempo and then back down again to sweet uh, sweet sweetie D um, I mean these are just very kind of more on the melodic side um, lots of space for people to um, to improvise and uh, and play and then finally at the last the last song I mean finally I love I love this album it's great um, and I, I'm usually one for ballads um, rather than you know these songs that are just kind of screaming you know um, I, I love those too, but you know, anyway, I'm just saying, this is kind of what this album is. If you're looking for something that's like, you know, in your face, you know, flying, you know, at 100 miles an hour, it, this is not the album for you. Um, but uh, the last song, 19 bars, they pick up the tempo quite a bit and uh, start, start really cooking. Um, but yeah, Silver Serenade. Um, Glad I picked this one up. This is a really awesome album. Um, like I said, a slower tempos, it leaves a lot of space, you know, and I love that space in there to for people to be able to play, you know, and improvise. So this is this is an awesome album. And then the last one. I should probably take off this shrink. It actually still had the shrink on there. Uh, I know this is I, once again I forget what pressing this is, but it's pretty old pressing. I think it's 60s pressing uh, of this. Um, but uh, yeah, Billie Holiday, stay with me. Maybe I'll take this shrink off. The shrink's been on since the 60s, I think. So anyway, there we go. Stay with me, Billie Holiday. Um, I mean, not much you can really say about Billie Holiday that hasn't already been said. Uh, if you don't know, she's amazing uh, jazz singer, very bluesy um, in the way that she sings. She didn't have a great voice um, as far as like octave range and you know all that kind of stuff, but the way that she sang the songs was uh, 
was why people loved her, you know. Um, the bluesy way that she sang the songs. Uh, she set a mood uh, and a feel and a vibe for, for these songs. Um, and that's why people enjoyed her so much. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, there's uh, I Wished on the Moon, Ain't Misbehaving, Everything Happens to Me, Say It Isn't So, I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm, Always Do, do Nothing Till You Hear From Me. Um, so, I mean, I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm is probably the one I know the most, or Ain't Misbehaving. Uh, that's, a, that's another standard, but... Um, but yeah, glad I have this, my first Billie Holiday album in my collection. So uh, hoping to get some more, um, but yeah, awesome. Uh, that is pretty much it. Um, once again, those were Instagram finds uh, from LP Guru. Um, I'll pr put the link below um, for you to check him out on Instagram and to also, um, um, possibly in my previous video that I did for um, the finds that I got from him. Um, but anyway, if you like this, please subscribe, like, and comment below. Um, if not, whatever. Um, it's on you. Um, anyway, I'll uh, talk to you guys later. See you, BC. Bye.